Around the world, people are working for a better tomorrow. What we're doing is mind-blowing. So this would be a carbon-neutral jet fuel. We grow vegetables, but to me, we give life. I believe when history is written and we look back at this moment in time, this will be when we started to transform the way we live to inform the future we want. The little worm that can actually dissolve plastic. In my architecture, I harmonize people with nature. Creating clouds, this is the definition of thinking outside the box. That was just part of the trailer from the upcoming Bloomberg original series titled An Optimist Guide to the Planet. The six-episode docu-series follows Emmy-nominated actor Nikolai koster Waldau as he and his team travel the globe to meet the solutions-oriented people facing down humanity's most pressing environmental challenges. And Nikolai joins us now. He also serves as a producer on the series, I, I like it. I want to know about the worm. Well, I, I <laughs> like it. The we'll, plastic. We'll, we'll get to that in a second, but is it real? It is real. Yeah. Oh my God. You're an optimist. That's good. We yeah. like optimists. That said, in in the first episode, you go to Greenland. Yeah. And you talk about how about two, that's where his wife is from. Right. So. Yeah. About two thousand what square miles of of the ice cap has mm -hmm. retreated since 1985. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not optimistic. Well, it's yeah. well, we went there because <laughs> Come on, make us happy. No, but we went there because it is it's kind of seen as the as the uh, the canary in the coal mine. Like right. you know, it's always the image of climate change. Right. And then we did a story there. We meet this geologist who says, "Well, actually, it could also be part of the solution." Because what happens every year, it's been happening for thousands of years, is that uh, all this glacier flour is, is washed out. So we have like billions and billions of tons of this thing. Mm -hmm. It turns out it can store CO2 and also it's an incredible fertilizer. And you can then take that to parts of the world where they don't have, where they have uh, bad soil. And it, it's, it was just so you can actually turn Greenland into a symbol of, of, the, solu uh, of the solution. But what we found was, was that it's a global show. Wow. We travel all over the world. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to do it, I'd, I'd, I'd worked with the, as a goodwill ambassador for the UNDP. I've been going around the world to see these projects. And I also found that the messaging becomes very much about the problem. Like we, have, we know that we have, some, have a massive problem when it comes to climate change. But we kind of tend to focus on the apocalyptic messaging right. and not the fact that we have solutions. That we have the, the biggest resource of all is us. Right. If you look at what human beings have, have created in, in history, it's insane. Like, look at this. This building we're sitting in, this city we're sitting in, like, humans made this. And I just refuse to believe that we're so stupid that we would mess up our own planet. Mm. Right? It, it's such a good reminder. We get the doomsday <laughs> clock and everyone says we're on the brink or we've passed the brink yeah. of no return. We can't fix this problem. And it's a good reminder in this space, in medicine, even in politics, dare I say, there are a lot of people working to do the right thing. But also the fact is that it seems like we keep talking about if we don't act, this is going to happen. Right. What we found out is that people are acting. Right. And it's happening all over. And it's a massive transition is already happening. Like, I remember six years ago, I was in San Francisco at this event. And the final thing I had to do was to drive an electric car around the corner. And that was a big thing. Today, it, it, I'm from Europe, in Northern Europe, it's the most sold cars are electric. It's happening on a global scale. And, uh, it's, and, and that thing you said about the, sometimes we, it's not just about high tech, it's also about looking back. Yeah. And seeing actually we had some solutions before that worked, we just have to reinvent them. Or look at nature, you know, offering us solutions. You saw the- The, the worms. The worms, that was a biochemist in, in Spain. Yeah. And she had as a hobby, she was a beekeeper. One day she had to clean up the, 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 the beehives and she yeah. found there were worms in there. She put them in a plastic bag. Next day she comes back, she sees those little holes and she goes, that's interesting. I wonder what that is. Did they just bite them their way out or did, was something else afoot? Turns out there was an enzyme in the saliva of these these uh, worms. worms that dissolve plastic. Mm. It's just, it's mind, well, mind blowing. Well, and are, is something happening with that? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, okay. the, 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 it's, it's that growing. That's incredible. They're yeah. making more um, worms. The photography is <laughs> amazing. In this clip, um, you discover scientists in Australia are creating man made clouds to cool the ocean. Yes. Take a look. There's two whole shipping containers with big air compressors in them to generate the compressed air to blast the plume.
And so what we see is that the plume actually gets sucked right up into the clouds. Oh, wow. We don't have well, to. That's do good, anything. right? Yeah, yeah, it's terrific. It makes life a lot easier. And in fact, it means we're able to revise a lot of our sort of uh, calculations as to how many stations we'd need and how efficient it would be. Per second, one of those machines, we've got two now, but for one, it produces about a thousand billion droplets a second from about a shot glass of water a second, 30 mils. Okay. You're smiling. I mean, is he just making stories? <laughs> so this is, this is the stuff of science fiction, That's creating man-made clouds. Yeah. Tell us the benefit of these clouds, but also how difficult is that? Can, can clouds be mass-produced? Now, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> All right. but, 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 but what is I I exciting is it's, it's a symbol of that thing about, like, just let's just open our minds to what we can actually achieve. Someone thought of it. Well, the sun is heating up the oceans. It's a problem right now. Uh, this was the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, right? Mm. How can we just give them a Band-Aid for, like, until we solve the other big issues and say, well, let's make some clouds. And then these guys came up with it, and it actually works. They lower the temperature of the oceans. They basically just put a cloud over. And it, it's a simple of, of what humans can achieve. And, and, and we found that, I mean, we had, we, to do the show, we had, like, so many stories from all over the world. And, uh, and I know that you said before, do we need, is there a reason for optimism? And I spoke to this one scientist in Australia, he said, because he said, no, I'm an optimist. But it's not like, I just want to be an optimist, because that's a nice thing. It's based on the science on the work we do, we can see we can actually make a difference. And also the idea that, that we, I mean, it's not like sometimes people want to create this idea that there's ill intent, that, you know, that the generations before us destroyed the future. No, it's not like we have people out there going, yeah, I want to destroy this planet, I hate this place. No, we all want a better tomorrow. And yes, we got carried away before we discovered plastic, it's just incredible. Maybe we should just slow down with this thing. And the same with fossil fuels. It, it's created so much wealth and prosperity and, 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 and beauty in this world. But we have to now find it another way. We've discovered that way doesn't work. It's not sustainable in the long term. But the solutions are out there. And that's what the show is about. Yeah. I hope so your optimism about it. people not were not so stupid that we would let these things happen. I hope you're right about that. Yeah. Go ahead, Jen. Yeah. Um, tell us about some of the people that you've met, because, you, I mean, you were on all these different continents, mm -hmm. people, you know, some the, the worms, yeah. the making of clouds, farmers, a lot of different folks, but is there something, like a characteristic that sort of, that, that was that was sort of uniform or, uh, across First the board? First of all, the whole concept is whether climate change is real or not and all that never came up and then that happened everywhere we went even in the tiniest village in Africa people were like no no we, we understand that and everybody also had the same you know what's interesting um, in our part of the world um, there's apparently they did a survey a couple of years ago 20, uh, 50 percent of 18 to 25 year olds young don't believe in the future believe that we're doomed and that is really a problem and that we need to address it because obviously we're not doomed I and mean, we have every reason to we will create a better world we never, I've never met that. Traveling outside our part of the world, there was nothing but positivity and optimism and belief that of course we can solve these issues, and we will. And, and these are uh, kids that you could objectively speaking say they have you know, harder odds than, mm -hmm. than kids in, in our part of the world. And I, I don't know why that is, but it's just an observation. Um, listen, it's just, there are, you know, we look at the war, we look at the news today, there are so many things that constantly hit us and you go, oh my God, there's a war here and there's a war there. But also sometimes it, it, it's important to remind ourselves that if you just look back 50 years and where we were and where we are today, we're actually doing better on almost every perimeter. We have an issue with climate change, but we're doing better all over. An Optimist Guide to the Planet begins streaming on the Bloomberg app and Bloomberg.com on February 8th. It will also air on Bloomberg TV. Nikolai Custer Waldau, thank you very much for sharing this thank with you. us. Thanks thank so you. much. Great thank work. You guys. And Great. Thank you for giving us, giving us a reason to be missed. Yes, we need it.